So today I'm going to be talking about what I used to pass CompTIA Server Plus SK0-004 on the first try. Let's head over and grab the CompTIA objectives. Like I've talked about in other videos, I like to grab the objectives first and I like to kind of go through them, get a better understanding of what I'm going to be learning. And then later on, I go back to the objectives and I focus on the ones that I'm weakest in. So here um, you can see that there's two. Uh, this is in beta, the SK0-005. This is the one I took and it's still going to be available some till probably mid to late next year. So you have plenty of time to take this exam. I highly recommend you take it if you've uh, if you've taken the A plus because it's it's like a to me it's a more professional version of the A plus. So we're gonna go ahead and open the objectives up, give them a quick look. All right, so the test details, we have 100 questions, and I can confirm that there was 100 questions on the exam. The length of the test is 90 minutes. It is multiple choice. There is no performance-based questions. And it is recommended that you get either the A plus or have a year or two of experience. I do agree with the getting the A plus because I feel like the A plus, once you get that, if you take this, it's so much easier. Uh, passing score is 750. And with this method, what I used, I got an 868 and I only studied for a month. So you, you can definitely pass using this method. So let's look at the objective domains. And if we look, it's uh, 1.0 is server architecture is 12%. 2.0 is server administration, 24%. 3.0 is storage at 12%. 4.0 is security at 13%. 5.0 is networking at 10%. And 6.0 is disaster recovery at 9%. 7.0 is troubleshooting at 20%. We scroll down here, we can see uh, the first one is server architecture. Uh, it's going to want you to know the rack mount dimensions like 1U, 2U, 4U sizes. Uh, it's going to want you to know the difference between uh, a rack server, a tower server, or a blade server. It's going to want you to know the difference between ECC RAM versus non ECC RAM. It's going to want you to know the difference between, you know, the bus types, PCI, PCIe, PCIX. It's going to want you to know RAID and the different RAID controllers and riser cards, different hard drives. It's going to want you to know the different versions of RAIDs and how to set those RAIDs up. It's going to want you to know about air cooling, airflow, thermal dissipation, baffles, shrouds, liquid cooling, different plug types. Um, you're going to want to know about wattages, all that stuff. You're going to want to know about BIOS and the different UEFI configurations and boot orders. You're going to want to know about different file systems. Um, and these questions I did have on the exam. So it's always hard to tell what you'll get on there. That's why you're going to want to use these objectives to really focus on what you're weak at and really drill down. It's going to want you to know about web servers, directory servers, file servers, database servers. So keep that in mind as well. So if you go through, it's going to want you to know uh, how to do use performance monitoring. It's going to want you to know um, fault tolerance for clustering, active, active, and active, passive, and you know all that stuff. And it's going to want you to understand asset management, the licensing, the labeling, uh, recycle management end of life, um, it's going to want you to understand the different types of documentation. Look up service manuals, look at, up at network diagrams, data flow diagrams, recovery documents, baseline documentation, 
and change management and service level agreements. You're going to want to know about the different types of hypervisors, type one, two, and hybrid. So there's quite a bit in here. These are the different raids it's going to want you to know. It's going to want you to know about security, you know, something you have, something you know, something you are, you know, keypads, access lists. So it's something to keep in mind. It's going to want you to know about application hardening, OS hardening. It's going to want you to know about firewalls, VPNs, DMZs, public and private security zones. You're going to want to know about UPSs and you know, run times versus capacity, uh, maximum load, uh, UPS ratings. So you're going to want to know about safety as in ESD procedures, fire suppressions, proper way to lift, rack stabilities. You're going to want to know about HVAC systems. Believe it or not, it's super important because without cooling, servers would won't be able to run. So that would be like a single point failure, you know. If your cooling fails, then everything uh, is going to fail. The server will go down. You're going to want to know about networking. You're going to need to know subnetting. And you don't have to be a pro at it, though, like you do with Net Plus. You just need to know basic networking. Um, but you're going to want to know it. You're going to want to know the difference between static IP, DHCP, NAT, and PAT. Um, these are the ports that you're going to want to know and protocols and connectors that you're going to want to know. You're going to know just between fiber single mode versus multi-mode. So that you're going to want to know about disaster recovery. What's the most appropriate type of recovery site? Do you want a hot site, a cold site, warm site? Why do you want that? Why would you want one versus the other? You're going to want to know about replication methods like disk to disk, server to server, and site to site, and why you use one over the other. Um, you want to know about disaster recovery plans, business continuity plans. So, and just like CompTIA likes to do with their exams, this is a broad exam. But if you've taken the A plus before, a lot of the stuff you've already learned. So. So taking the A plus before the server plus does have its benefits. You can pass the server plus without taking the A plus. I just feel like it's going to be much more difficult in doing so. So it's something to think about. And then you're going to go, they're going to want you to go through troubleshooting just a ton of different things. Like what happens if you have an unsuccessful backup or uh, drives not available or you have slow IO performance or restore failure. Uh, maybe a cable problem or controller failure or improper disk partition, you know, you're going to want to look at uh, partitioning and disk management and RAID array management. So, and uh, also security issues, you know, you want to make sure that you're understanding that you only want ports open that need to be open and services that need to be um, enabled and everything else needs to be locked down. You want to make sure that you don't have any misconfigured permissions or firewall rules. You got to know about uh, some viruses, uh, rogue processes and services. You're going to want to know about different security tools like port scanners and sniffers and, you know, Telenet client. Definitely don't want to use that. <laughs> it's not secure. So, and then here are some of the acronyms. You're going to want to learn these because they'll, they'll do that on the test, you know. They'll do like GFS and you'll be like, what does that mean? Well, grandfather, father, son. It's a backup method, by the way. Um, so obviously some of these you probably already know, um, like FTP and so forth, but you still want to just kind of go through and just look at all the acronyms that you need to learn. All right. So after, uh, you know, I kind of go through this and I went through this and looked around I then went to trusty old Amazon and
this is the study material that I used. Um, this book is awesome. And if you look here, this person, they got an 861, which is a great score. So if you look at that, you know, it's very doable to get a really good score with this book. What I like about this book is there's just no fluff in it. It just gets to the point. Um, it, it shows you how to configure a Windows Server and Virtual Lab. It shows you how to configure Linux. It ties them together so they're talking to each other. It shows you how to um, set up RAID in the Virtual Lab. It shows you how to set up a DHCP server. It shows you how to set up Active Directory, how to set up um, DNS server, how to set up a time server. So there's just a ton of material in this book. Another thing that I like about this book is it has practice tests in the book. So again, when you're going through it, if you feel like you know you're weak in an area, take notes on that. And then you can drill down later um, when you take the tests because it does come with a companion CD with 200 test questions. And so what I would do is I would focus on those sections where I was weakest, and then I would continuously test on those. And so when I was getting over 90% on the practice tests from this book, I went ahead and scheduled my exam. And like I said, I passed it. So if you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Smash that like button. And also subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and until next time.